This is a follow-up video to the one that I posted previously on finding the frequency, resonant frequency of an unknown crystal. In that previous video, I used the Elo Craft uh, RF signal generator to generate a, a sweep over a defined frequency range and then use the oscilloscope in triggering mode to trigger when the amplitude of the signal jumped. <clears throat> One thing that I did after the video was I went back and ran the sweep on a given crystal about seven, eight, nine times and I noticed that the frequency when the oscilloscope triggered jumped around a little bit. For example on a one of the crystals that's in the 13 megahertz range I would see triggers at 13.3, 13.4, So what I'm going to do in this video <clears throat> is I'm going to use a function generator and I'm going to manually sweep the frequency in smaller increments and at a much slower rate so that I can see exactly when the amplitude jumps and in theory this should give us an almost exact resonant frequency and as I did before I do have a crystal that I tested this theory on with a a known resonant frequency and this method seemed to be dead on so what I'm going to do is take one of the crystals that I used last time of unknown frequency that I came up with a frequency of 13.5 and we're going to use this technique with the function generator and do a slow sweep and see if it truly is 13.5 or a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Before we do that however I want to run through using the XG3 method and do four or five sweeps so you can see what I'm talking about with the frequency. I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to read that on the scope so I'll read it out to you after I do every sweep. Alright, so right now you can see we've got 13.44 megahertz. I'm going to initiate a sweep. Now we've got 13 13.5, 1, 13.37, 13.44, 13.44. 13.44 13 13.37 13.37 13.44 okay I'm not going to do any more <clears throat> so my guess is on an average that would probably be a 13.4 megahertz crystal so in just a second I'm going to switch over to the uh, function generator and we're going to manually sweep that range slowly and watch what happens on the oscilloscope. Okay I've got everything set up. I have the function generator hooked up to the crystal and I'm going to be starting out I don't know that you can see that at 13.9 are 13.39 megahertz. And again, I don't know if you'll be able to read that on the oscilloscope or not, so as I change, I'll let you know what they are. <clears throat> so we're at 13.39, and I'm going to go up in hundreds of megahertz. So now we're at 13.4, and you can see that the amplitude increased a little bit. Now we're at 13.41. That's 13.43. Uh, 
and then 13.44. So it should be pretty obvious at 13.43 that that's our resonant frequency. So that came pretty close to what we saw with our multiple triggers using the sweep from the XG3, but we did notice that we got a little bit of uh, jitter using that method, but using this method where we can exactly control the frequency on a slower time base, we can pretty much zero in on the exact resonant frequency. <clears throat> now, I, I don't know, you know, depending on your application, whether or not, you know, 13.4 or 13.43 or 13.5 makes a big difference, but it could. My application will be using the crystal to generate clock frequency for microcontrollers. And in order to do things like serial communications, I'll need to know as accurately as possible what the exact frequency is. So it's important to me. So next step will be to go back through all of those crystals that I tested previously and zero in on the, the resonant frequency. I guess I could either do that ahead of time and write it all down or just have the crystals in a marked with a broad range like 13.4 or 13.5 and as I need them just test them out to see what the exact resonant frequency is. I had mentioned in the first video that I was going to make a follow-up video using a dip meter. I did try that and the results didn't seem uh, very satisfactory to me. Um, using the sweep method and the function generator method seem to deliver a lot more precise results. So I think for the time being I'm probably going to skip doing a video using the dip meter method and I'm just going to stick to the sweep method and the function generator method. Now of course if your function generator will do a sweep and most of them will there's no need to um, use a, a device like the Elcraft XG3. It's just that at the time that I did the first video, I didn't have a function generator that went high enough in frequency to be useful. And I already had the XG3 laying around, but since then, I did acquire a function generator that has the, uh, the bandwidth to perform the sweep. I wanted to make one last note before I wrap the video up. I don't know if you'll recall or not, but the waveform that was generated by the uh, XG3 while in the general shape of a sine wave was uh, very far from a pure sine wave. <clears throat> so I got to wonder if that could have been responsible for some of the, the jitter we saw. So I went back and repeated the same sweep test using the signal generator, which outputs a very clean sine wave, and I still saw the, the same results. So it doesn't appear to have anything to do with the, the dirty sine wave. I'm not going to do that on here because it's something you've already seen, but I just wanted to to let you know that in case anyone was wondering if that less than perfect sine wave could have had an impact on the results. So having said all that, I think we've reached the, the end of the video. I'm not sure what's going to come next, but stay tuned and we shall see. Thank you for watching.